Hello there folks, welcome to a brand new playthrough video. Today I'm going to be playing through Entity, a solo storytelling NASA punk game by Peter Schultz. I'm the Lone Adventurer, thank you very much for joining me on this particular excursion. If you enjoy this video, consider liking it and hitting the subscribe button if you want to see more playthroughs of games such as this. If you think that this is a game you want to have a go at yourself, there is a link in the description below to Drive Through RPG where you can grab yourself a copy. This is a game that has been all the talk of the uh, social media solo gaming circles. I've seen a lot of people talking about it. I think it was the number one bestseller under $5 on drive through RPG for a period. I think it even got into the bestsellers overall as well, which is pretty crazy for a small self-published little game such as this. So I was curious to see what it's all about. So I got myself a copy and here we are. That was an exciting story, wasn't it? Oh, before I tell you what this game is all about, I should tell you that this is the low ink version that I am looking at here. The uh, original publication is quite attractively laid out and colourful and it's got some nice illustrations in, but eh, my arcane printer couldn't cope with that nonsense, so here we are. Right, so in this game, in entity, you play an IAP, which is an Interplanetary Adaptive Pioneer, a kind of synthetic AI-driven astronaut, and you've been built to explore and adapt to diverse environments scattered across our solar system. It's got quite an elaborate backstory. I'll try and summarise it rather than read out this whole thing. Essentially, you're one of these AI um, synthetic astronauts, Shortly after the programme of IAPs began, there was a rogue black hole that destroyed the solar system, essentially. Lucky for you, you were one of the IAPs who was on an expedition beyond the solar system, so you did not get destroyed. You found yourself on your survey vessel with some other IAPs, I guess, in a nebula, Inside the nebula you discover a gigantic floating pyramid thing, structure, thing. When you discover it, it begins to mess with the uh, ship's structure. The ship starts to break down. Um, the IAP crew start to panic and jump into navigation pods and they are disintegrated you find yourself pulled out into space and you uh, lose consciousness or your system powers down. When you power back up, when you reboot, you find yourself on a strange alien planet surface below this giant pyramid. And the aim of the game is to work out what the heck is going on. So let me just read you the last couple of paragraphs here. To uncover the mysteries of the colossal pyramid and this intriguing planet filled with peculiar anomalies, you, as an AI, must first restore your functionality by reinstalling upgrades. Simultaneously, the erection of particular structures will elevate your research potential and hasten your acclimatization to this otherworldly environment. Undertaking these tasks and conducting thorough research may seem daunting initially, but they are essential steps on this journey, a journey leading to discovery. So there we are, we are an AI, and we need to explore this planet and work out what is going on. So we've got a character sheet here, which I have already filled out. Character generation is very straightforward, but I will talk you through what is on that sheet and what it all means. And we'll do a little overview of the uh, gameplay loop that you go through as well. Essentially, what you do in this game is you select a mission from a, uh, a list of optional missions for you to go on. Then you 
as part of that mission, go on multiple expeditions out into this strange planet where you found yourself. And gradually, over the course of those expeditions, you will build up your resources, um, hopefully uh, improve the upgrades on your spacesuit, discover more stuff about the planet, and you will acquire abstracted resources called aspects. Each mission has uh, two, three or four aspects that you have to find or complete. And when you do that, you complete the mission. When you complete a mission, you turn to the back page of this book where we've got um, some discoveries and you go through those. Each time you complete a mission, you read one of those discoveries and that reveals something about the planet, some aspect of the mystery of where we find ourselves. And then you start another mission and you carry on. Let's have a look at the character sheet. So our AIP that we are playing is called Andy. Andy and all AIPs have three different traits. Each trait has three sort of subcategories that are called edges. These stats are used to complete action roles during the game um, to determine whether you're successful or whether you fail at the various things that you try to do. So we've got technology gives us the edges of robotics, information technology and engineering. Analytics gives you the edges of physics, biology and chemistry. And adaptivity gives you survival, communication and navigation. So I've chosen to make um, adaptivity my strongest trait, followed by technology and my weakest trait is analytics. And then for each of the edges on each of the traits you have to assign one, two and three. So you've got one that you're particularly strong at, one that you're a little bit weaker at, and one that's sort of in the middle. Over here we've got the three different um, resources that you track during the game. Firstly, we've got resources. Confusingly, I can't think of a, a better word to describe all three of them. Um, things that you track. First thing that you track is resources. And these are, um, again, a sort of an abstracted concept a resource is something that you can use to build stuff. You start with none. Next up is energy. Energy is used to power the various upgrades of your suit. You start with 10 energy. I'm gonna use cubes to represent these things. So energy is the green cubes. There we go. And then the final thing you're tracking is data. And data can be used to increase the likelihood that your encounters and your explorations are successful. And we'll show how that works in a little bit. Finally, we've got the spacesuit. Spacesuit is comprised of 20 slots, so you can theoretically have 20 different upgrades on your spacesuit. You start with just three. The integrated multi-tool, that allows you to re-roll dice. The adaptive energy shield, allows you to protect yourself from um, certain damage. And the resource conversion unit allows you to convert resources that you find into energy or data. So yeah, you can have up to 20 upgrades, but also when you damage yourself, you, when, you, when you damage your spacesuit, you have to cross some of these slots off. There's two types of damage. There is strain, which is sort of middling damage that can be repaired and there's impairments which are more permanent damage that cannot be shifted. So if you get strain, you write strain here and you have uh, one slot you can't use. If you get an impairment, you write impairment here and you have a slot you can't use. However, impair impairments can never be removed. If at any point these are all filled up with strain or impairments, then you have been destroyed. All right, we've had a slight shift around because I stopped and I was sleepy and started again the following day. And now I'm not sleepy. Isn't that, isn't that great? Now, all that's left to do is select a mission. And I think with that done, I'm essentially in a position where we can just get cracking and everything else in the game I will explain as we go.
So this is our list of missions that we can choose from. Every mission has a title. It has, I think every single one has a uh, structure that you build as part of your um, extraterrestrial base. And each building has a uh, benefit, some a way that it will um, improve your chances of future success. As I mentioned before, all missions have two, three or four aspects to them that need to be completed. That's just an abstract way of indicating how tricky the mission is going to be, how long it's going to take. So, so far, my general approach has been to select one of the easier, quicker missions to start with. Don't know if that's the best way to do it, but that's certainly what I'm going to be doing today. And that way we will have a decent shot at getting all the way through one mission in the course of these videos. So I'm going to select the mission Endless Storage, which is a mission that can be repeated five times. It allows you to construct a high density storage facility to increase the resource capacity of your spacesuit. This is a two aspect mission. So I'm going to write down the name of the mission and make a note of how many aspects we need in order to complete it. And with that done, we are straight into the exploration. This is just a page from the book that I've printed out separately because you have to refer to it a little bit. So the gameplay loop is split down into two main sections. You have the exploration bit and the side activities bit. Main bit is the uh, exploration. In the exploration, we will identify which location we are heading to. We will travel to that location and possibly have an encounter along the way. And then we'll have an encounter of some kind at the location. With all that done, we then have to pick from one of uh, one, two, three, four, five side activities, which are as follows. First one is to collect data. Data is the um, element. It allows you to increase some of your dice rolls. It is quite important if you want to progress at a decent pace through the game, but we'll get to that later. You can recharge your energy. As a reminder, energy is used to power your spacesuit upgrades. You can gather resources. Resources are needed to build upgrades on your suit. You can implement an upgrade. So if you have 10 resources, you can add an upgrade to your suit. Or you can self-repair, which means using resources to remove a strain, a kind of damage, from your suit. So those are the things we need to do. First thing is to find out where we are going. So we know what we need. Our AIP knows what they need in order to uh, complete this mission. The various natural resources and information needed in order to complete endless storage. And we need to find out where we are going. So we're going to roll 2d10. I think that was a three. So that's 83. This means we are going to the lifeless grove, a forest of petrified trees, once vibrant and teeming with life, now frozen in time and devoid of any sign of life. Right, so this is our first expedition. I don't think you necessarily have to... Uh, write elaborate journal entries, although I know some people enjoy doing that, and maybe that is their reason for playing a game like this. I'm more interested in the mechanics and and game progression, so I'm just going to be writing simple notes. Now, on the way to the Lifeless Grove, something might happen, and we have this travel encounter table to dictate whether something happens or not. So the options are, if we roll a 1 to a 4, we will have a challenge. A 5 to a 7, nothing will happen. 
An 8 or a 9 is an opportunity, and a 10 plus is a finding. So a challenge is a tricky situation that you have to overcome. An opportunity is a situation that offers the chance to uh, gain something beneficial. Both of these require action roles using our stats. And a finding is the bestest thing of all because you get something useful and you don't have to roll and there's no chance of you dying. It's just good times. Right, so let's see which one of these things is going to happen. One, great start. So that is a challenge, which is a situation where there is a risk of something nasty happening. Now you might have noticed that this game is not one that is particularly inclined to uh, put you in situations where you have to fight. All of the situations that you have to get out of use your various skills and uh, represent your AIP um, creatively resolving situations without resorting to fisticuffs. So there's no fighting, there's no fight mechanic in this game. So if, if that's something that you look for, this might not be the game for you. We're going to roll D100 again to see what encounter challenge we get. 81. So 81 gives us an alien weather control device in your vicinity is triggering violent weather anomalies. And that challenge has three, four, four keywords. So these relate to the edges associated with your traits. And the edges that can be used to overcome this alien weather control device are physics, engineering, navigation, and IT. So I'm going to end up using navigation for this because navigation is my best. It is an edge associated with adaptivity, which I gave my highest score to, and navigation I gave my highest edge score to in that group. So action rolls are very simple. We roll 2d10, and then we look at each result. And we have to make sure that each result is less than or equal to the difficulty class of the challenge. Difficulty class is the trait plus the edge. So for this one, we're doing five plus three, which gives us eight. So we have to roll eight or less on both of these dice. If we succeed, we have a full success. If we only succeed on one dice, we have a partial success. And if we fail on both dice, we have a failure. Ah, so that is a partial success because we've rolled a two, which is eight or less. And we rolled 10, which is more than eight, as you would know if you're familiar with our human number system. If you have a partial success, the action is carried out, but with a complication and therefore strain must be marked. I don't really want to have strain on my suit at this early stage. So what I could do, what I'm going to do, is use my integrated multi-tool I can spend two energy and re-roll one dice. So obviously I'm going to re-roll that one. Ah, do I want to keep spending energy? I don't think I do. I think I'm just going to have to take the strain. So we lose one of our slots to strain. Energy is really useful, so I don't really want to use it all up doing something that doesn't really matter. And I didn't really explain why this doesn't matter. With a travel encounter, regardless of whether you succeed or fail, you continue on to the location. Things become a little bit more important in terms of whether you succeed or fail when you're at the location. But I think I will explain that um, now. Let's explain that now. Right, so we're going to be moving on to the location encounter. Again, we're going to be rolling 1d10, but things are a bit more sophisticated here. If you roll a 1 or a 2, we get a challenge, much like we just got on the way to this location. 
However, that's a challenge at threat three, which means that roll we just did, we would have to complete it successfully three times in order to not get strain or... Uh, the other thing, which I keep forgetting. What's the other thing called? Impairments. It's a good word. I'm annoyed that I keep forgetting it. So yeah, that's one to two. Three to four. If you roll a three or a four, you get you have to do a challenge again. But this time you only have to succeed twice. Roll a five, you have to do a challenge at a disadvantage. So that means you roll an extra dice and you get rid of the dice that's most beneficial to you, which would be the dice with the lowest value. Six, things start to look up a little bit because now you have to do a challenge and then you have to have an opportunity, which is nice. This is an opportunity at a disadvantage. Then seven and eight, you have a challenge, a normal challenge and a normal opportunity. At a nine, now things are starting to look really good. You get, you have to do a challenge, then you get an opportunity and then you get a finding. And finally, if you roll a 10 or more, you have to do a challenge, then an opportunity, then a finding, and then you get an aspect, which counts towards you completing your mission. Now, the reason why I said challenges are more important at locations is because if you don't get a full or a partial success on your challenge roll, on your challenge action roll, you don't get to go on and do the things that are more beneficial. So you always have to start the challenge, and if you fail, then your encounter at that location is over, and you cannot continue. Right, so let's um, let's do it, shall we? Let's have a location encounter. Right, so we need to roll d10 to see what's going to happen. Two. Great. Not great. Not great at all. That's super annoying. So we're going to be doing a challenge at threat two, which means we need to succeed on the action roll two times. So this could be a sticky situation. So let's have a look. What's going to happen here? 76. The area you're exploring seems to be sentient and constantly shifts its paths. And you can use navigation or communication. That's good because I'm good at navigation. So we're going to be doing a couple of navigation roles. So once again, our difficulty class is 5 plus 3, which is 8. So we're trying to roll 8 or less. For goodness sake, another 10. All right, I'm going to re-roll that. Am I going to re-roll that? Do I have to take strain twice if I fail both of these? I think I do. Remember, I'm having to do this twice because it is a threat level 2 challenge because I rolled a low number. Because I roll low numbers when low numbers are bad and I roll high numbers when high numbers are bad. That's that's how it works for me. Anyway, I'm going to spend the energy to re-roll it. Oh, for goodness sake. Same again. Right, so we take a strain. So we're going to do it again, because we have to do it again. All right, so at least we succeed this time and we don't take any additional strain. But I've lost a bunch of energy now, which is annoying. To finish the round, we need to do one of the side activities. I think I'm going to go for data collection because I have learnt that data is very useful. So what we have to do is add our analytics trait to the number 4. So that gives us 7. And that's the difficulty class for the collect data action role. So we've got to roll 7 or less. And we've done it. Fantastic. All right, bit of luck. So that means we get our analytics score in data. So we're going to get three data and I'm going to be using these yellow cubes, hopefully I remember which is which, to represent the data. And there we go, that is our first expedition done. We don't have an aspect yet, we lost some energy, we took some strain, So, uh, but we got some data, so it wasn't all bad, but um, not the strongest opening in this game of Entity. So there you go, folks. That was our first playthrough video. Um, I've been The Lone Adventurer. Thank you very much for watching. I'll continue this playthrough in a, another video, which will be linked in the description below. Catch you in that one. Bye for now.